Well, we're back out here in the cotton field today. Uh, again, scouting for pigweed as always. Still got some more that popped up, but uh, the biggest thing is is checking checking the status of this crop, and I'm really really excited about the crop we got. I mean, I've it's it's loading up with fruit like I, like I've never like I've never seen before, and uh, you know this is uh this is the first cotton we planted. We got it planted on time. It's a medium medium maturity variety, and uh, didn't have to replant it. And we've had a we've had a pretty good summer as far as far as weather. We've had plenty of moisture. Uh, we've had kind of average to maybe a little below average temperatures. So the development is is running a little bit behind. But uh, the cotton plant cotton plants haven't hardly been stressed all year long. So really excited about about what's out here. And uh, hang on a minute, and I'll I'll show you I'll show you what it looks like. So. Right now, uh, this cotton right here, it's coming up close to chest tall on me. I'm about I'm about six foot two, so we've got some we've got some real high cotton here, lap in the middles, just nice and even across the field. Just looks looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, checking the development, see how far along it is. You know, we're looking to see how high up on the plant the the first white bloom is, and on this plant right here, you know, it's pretty close to the top. It's one, two, three nodes down. So there's really only three more nodes on this cotton plant that can bloom and set fruit. Now the last effective bloom date that we have here in West Tennessee is typically considered about August 15th. Uh, any, you know, right around August 15th, uh, just based on historical weather patterns, anything that blooms at that time has about a 50% chance of making a harvestable bowl of, you know, having enough heat units left in the year to grow and mature out to where it can make cotton that we can actually harvest. So, and each one of these nodes will bloom about once every three days. So we got about five days left. So, you know, I would expect the next two nodes up to bloom in time to make make a harvestable bowl. Now that's just based on all on average weather patterns. You know, if we have a warmer than average uh, end of August and September, you know, then we have the chance we have a chance to set more fruit. Whereas we uh, have a below average uh, August and September as far as temperature wise. You know, the the this fruit that, that's blooming right now might not might not mature out. So, but just looking down the plant. It's hard to tell with all all the leaves, but I mean, just there's bowls top to bottom. I mean, we're setting on a lot of these branches. I mean, we're setting two to three positions out. You know, you you at least like to have at least one bowl per limb. You know, uh, if you have two, that's good. To, uh, to set three just means that the plant ha plant hadn't been lacking for anything. Insect control has been has been good. So here's an upper limb. You've got two positions set. Uh, the fruit, the, the plants are starting to shed some of the fruit just basically because the cotton plant will will set more fruit than what it can actually supply nutrients to and, and mature. The roots and the plant just can't, you know, bring up enough nutrients and produce enough energy to support to support all of these all of these squares. So a lot of times after they bloom, the but then after they bloom, some of these squares will just will just naturally sh will just naturally shed. Look down here on the ground, so you can see a few on the ground here that that that, that the plant has kicked off, and that that's completely natural. I mean, obviously you don't you want to see as little as possible, but I mean it's 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 unavoidable, like this one right here. So it just pops right off. Well, it's the second position out on the on the branch and. You know this this bowl right here is a primary bowl. It's the one that the plant is really concerned about providing nutrients to and maturing out, and it just can't provide the resources to this one out here. So it's decided to, it's decided to shed it. Now there's another square on the end of this branch that's going to bloom tonight, and you know there's a chance that the plant may may decide to keep it. Just it's just kind kind of a kind of a random random pattern. There's another one right here. Yeah, just touch it and it, it fall, falls off. Again, we want to minimize minimize that. Uh, but you know, this time this time of year, you walk down the middles and uh, you, it looks like all the fruit's been shed off the plant when you look on the ground and see all the squares. But I mean, we've got a lot of 
we got a lot of bowls set on the plant that the plant is going to is going to keep and now the key is just hoping we get enough uh, we get enough sunshine to supply the plants with the energy that they need to produce the carbohydrates to, to keep keep all this fruit and also insect control we probably got about another two weeks where we have to worry about insect control. Uh, after that, uh, most of this stuff will be mature enough that uh, that in, any insects won't won't be able to bother it. So, we got probably one more in insecticide application to do probably this coming week, and that should that should get us by. Now let's look at some of the more mature bowls and just see how close they are to maturity. Now right, here's a bottom branch, right here. I guess it broke off. And here's, this is probably the first bowl that, that bloomed on the plant. So we'll pick it. And I'll take my dull knife and we'll cut it open. Take, take a look at it. And it's not cutting easy with my dull knife, which is a sign that it's getting, getting close to maturity. Give me a minute here. All right, I wasn't able to cut all the way through it, but I'll try and get in the shade. Now this this fiber, you can tell. I mean, it's still got plenty of moisture, but it's not gelatinous anymore. It's it's actual fiber, and it will and it will string out. Also, we look at some of these seeds that we cut. Try and get this in focus here. You can see the cotyledon right there inside the seed is fully formed. There's no more. There's no more jelly in there. So probably about another week, this bowl will be completely mature. Now it'll still probably still take a little while after that for it to open open up. But this bowl is is all is almost complete completely mature. And of course, the plant will start opening up the mature bowls at the bottom and work its way work its way work its way up the top. Once the cotton starts opening up, you know, our hope is is that we get minimal rainfall to to affect the quality of the of the fiber and, and also the yield. Any rainfall will uh, wash a lot of the oil off of this off of the fiber, and will ac actually and will and will lower the weight of the lint. And we you know we get paid on on how many pounds of cotton we can sell. So obviously we want it as we want it as heavy as possible. So. But, this I'm just I'm just ecstatic over this over this cotton crop. It is just loaded loaded up. Uh, this variety right here is Delta Pine 16 1646, I believe. So I imagine by the time we defoliate this, probably around the between the first uh, well probably around the first of October or so is when I when I'm guessing right now. Yeah, you know, you know, by the by the middle of October, this this field should be snow white. It'd be absolutely beautiful. So, anyway, I got a long walk over there to my my side by side, and uh, you can't hardly see it because it's it because the cotton's so tall. But got a long walk over there, and I'm gonna try and get get around the rest rest of this field and try and try and find find any more pigweeds we got. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll post another update on the crops whenever I get the chance.